Welcome to the Friday, February 15th, 2013 edition of Erner Berry's Daily Video, sponsored by Absano's Market Insight Report. In today's video, we compare 2012 U.S. beef cow inventories and production figures. And later, Erner Berry's reporter previews the largely overlooked U.S. food stamp program. Now let's look at the markets with your host, Jamie Chadwick. Sanderson Farms announced at its annual stockholders meeting that it will construct a new poultry complex in the Palestine, Texas area, but the project will remain on hold for a clearer economic picture to present itself. The new bird deboning complex will consist of a feed mill, hatchery, poultry processing plant and wastewater facility and will complement the company's current operations in Bryan and Waco, Texas. However, according to Joe Sanderson Jr., the company's chairman and CEO, construction of the new complex is on hold until there is a more definitive information on future grain prices and availability in addition to other economic factors, chief among them being an improvement in national employment. For more information on Sanderson Farms' latest stockholders meeting and for other Center of the Plate protein news, head over to foodmarket.com. Now here is Erner Berry staff writer Michael Ramsing with a look at the USDA's latest comparison of beef production and inventories in 2012. According to the USDA's February 2013 Livestock Dairy and Poultry Outlook Report, U.S. cattle inventories are at their lowest levels in over 60 years, but beef production has yet to fully reflect this change in cattle numbers. In 2010, massive drought reduced pasture availability, forcing cows to slaughter, feeder cattle out of Mexico, and feeder cattle into feedlots prematurely. Inventories of all cattle and calves as of January 2013 were 89.3 million ahead, their lowest level since January 1952 when inventories of all cattle and calves was 88.1 million ahead. Beef cow inventories were 29.3 million, the lowest since 28 million in 1962. Meanwhile, total commercial cow slaughter in 2011 and 2012 proceeded at 17 and 16.6 percent of total January cow inventories, well above the more typical rates of 12 to 15 percent normally seen during this time. This rate of cow slaughter, combined with a smaller percentage of heifers entering the beef cow herd, left beef cow inventories 2.9 percent below the revised 2012 inventory. However, U.S. beef production has not fully reflected changes in cattle numbers. While declining slightly in 2011 and 2012, year-over-year -year production, beef production per perceived a boost from the increased rate of cow slaughter, more imported cattle, and bigger animals. Generally, dress weights have increased about 4 pounds per year since the 1970s. In 2012, average dress weights for federally inspected steers and heifers were 18 and 19 pounds heavier than in 2011, exceeding the average annual trend of an increase in weights. For a complete look at the USDA's February 2013 Livestock Dairy and Poultry Outlook Report, head over to Comtel and click Supply Data under the Red Meat tab. Thanks, Michael. And to wrap up today's video, the spring 2013 edition of Erner Berry's Reporter is slated to hit newsstands just in time for distribution at key events such as the International Boston Seafood Show and the Midwest Poultry Show. To get an idea of the valuable content that will be featured in the food industry's best center of the plate news magazine, here's Erner Berry Market Reporter Russell Barton analyzing the U.S. food stamp program in 2012 and what the latest figures suggest about the overall state of the U.S. economy. Official unemployment figures are on the decline. Average weekly wages are on the rise. Inflation is in check and the S&P 500 is at or near five-year highs. All would appear right in the world. However, one data point continues to loom in the background. An important yet commonly overlooked and underappreciated measure that bodes ill for economic recovery and the health of the population overall. In an ongoing and troubling trend, the amount of households collecting food stamps continues to break new highs. In its latest release, the USDA showed that a new record of just over 23 million households were participating in the program. Between November 2010 and November 2012, the amount of households collecting food stamps, or as of October 28th, on the Sub Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, otherwise known as SNAP, increased by nearly 13%. That equates to over 4 million additional Americans requesting nutritional aid from the U.S. government. Government funding for this program has increased over this period, however at a slower pace than that of the increase in participants. Therefore, the amount of compensation distributed to each recipient has fallen by roughly $10 over the last several years. 
To read more about the nation's food stamp growth and about the possible consequences of this budget deficit, look for my full article in the upcoming issue of Erner Barry's Reporter. If you are not yet subscribed to our free quarterly publication, give us a call at 800-932-0617. Thanks, Russell. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful weekend. Today's video is sponsored by Epsano's Market Insight for the Meat Industry, providing information, education, and insight for the beef, pork, and poultry industries. View a sample report at Epsano.com or call 800-932-0617 to get your free sample today.